Hello everyone! Thanks for joining me today on this episode of Taking It From The Top. I don't have a saxophone in hand today, but I wanted us to have a conversation on the topic of musician's wellness. Performance anxiety and playing related musculoskeletal disorders are topics I care deeply about in my teaching because they're so prevalent in our field today. We tend to shy away from these conversations because we're either trying to impress our teachers with how hard we're working or trying to shield ourselves from the stigma from colleagues or concert presenters that we're either weak or sick. I believe that we need to be better about talking about the psychological stressors or the physical discomforts that we're predisposed to as performing artists in order to set ourselves up for success in any field that we choose to pursue. I know we're not necessarily going to figure out and solve the world's problems in one YouTube video, but I'd like to begin this conversation by sharing my own stories with performance anxiety and tendonitis. Performance anxiety affects each of us in unique ways and tends to creep up on us at the most unexpected and inconvenient times. For me, I was at my absolute lowest when I was preparing for the Young Artist Competition with the Montreal Symphony Orchestra, where despite months and months of preparation, I was absolutely horrified in a coaching that I had the day I was supposed to fly out to the competition, where I couldn't recall any of the music I was supposed to have memorized for performances over the next few days. My hands were jittery, I had butterflies in my stomach, I had dry mouth, all the classic physical manifestations of the psychological stress I was putting on myself because I wanted to do well at the competition. I felt crippled at the instrument. I had to practice at every waking moment to allow myself to feel prepared and to suppress any of these anxious feelings I was having about the competition. Thankfully, this has a happy ending. I was able to earn a scholarship at the end of the day, but I knew that upon returning home, I needed to deal with this core issue of these anxious feelings if I wanted to be able to have a sustainable career in the performing arts. When I returned to Evanston, I expected my first saxophone lesson to resemble a debriefing on how I could have done better at the competition. Instead, I was greeted by Dr. McAllister, a tall pile of his books and a meaningful lunchtime conversation about how to rebuild my confidence and trust in myself as a performer. This ultimately set me up on an upward trajectory through the rest of the semester that ultimately culminated in my second master's recital, which remains one of my most fond memories at Northwestern University. Several years later, I was in a conversation with my theory mentor, Dr. Lee Van Handel, about imposter syndrome. By being able to talk to someone and to be able to label and define these sources of stress, I felt like I was finally able to re recover, rebuild, and redefine myself as a performer, scholar, and educator. I'd love to share a couple of points that have helped me grow through this entire process. My first piece of advice, develop a routine. You want to learn to trust in your process and preparation, so by regularly getting into a rhythm of putting yourself into a working headspace, whether it's a meditation, a warm-up, or a visualization exercise, you can reframe a stressful situation and turn it into another day at the office. My second piece of advice, practice like you're performing so that you can perform what you've practiced. We've already discussed that practicing can take on a variety of forms and that you can employ a number of strategies. Ultimately, your preparation wants to set a foundation for your performances so that you can draw upon all of these positive experiences to afford your artistic and technical freedom. My third piece of advice, be mindful. Learn to identify the factors that you can and can't control and learn to let go. These feelings of doubt, of anxiety, whatever they may be, they are unique to you and anybody that is going to support you is going to embrace that anyway. If there are folks that don't want to be a part of that ride, that's perfectly fine too. Be in the moment for the people that want to be there for you. In the fall of 2015, I began to enjoy a vibrant performance schedule as a student at the University of Michigan. I was collaborating with folks from across the country and was working on and performing much more music than ever. This was all really exciting until the spring of the following year when I was noticing some changes in my hands. My fingers weren't moving as quickly or as precisely as they used to, and I almost felt like there was some sort of input lag as I was trying to play the saxophone. Everyday tasks like cutting vegetables or opening the door would cause pain to shoot out my arm. And when I visited a hand specialist, I was shocked to learn that my grip strength at the time was half that of an average person. 
And at that point, I was diagnosed with tendonitis in both of my wrists. I needed to make an important decision at that time. Did I pursue my last hurrah at a number of these important performance competitions? Or did I have to give all of that up to rebuild a sustainable career in performance and teaching? Ultimately, I pulled out of all of my performance and competitions engagements and spent the summer in Ann Arbor relearning how to play the saxophone with an occupational therapist. Thankfully, my road to recovery was not as bad as I had anticipated. With the help of my occupational therapist, we were able to come up with a regimen of rest, recovery, and recalibration. What this meant for me was that I was able to practice the saxophone in short controlled sessions and space those practice sessions out between not so short and less monitored Pokemon Go walks, the game of that summer. Following her advice and being patient with the treatment process allowed me to bounce back and in the fall, following my initial diagnosis, I was able to perform an entire saxophone recital. After that, I continued to strengthen and condition my body to play the saxophone effectively by taking Alexander Technique and yoga sessions and joining some of my friends in strength training. While I don't feel I totally recovered until the fall of 2018, the process of recalibrating and relearning how to play the saxophone allowed me to stay active as a performer and teacher for the two years that I was spent recovering from my initial diagnosis. Here are a couple things that helped me grow through yet another recovery process. My first piece of advice, practice smarter, not harder. Beating your head against the wall to try to solve the problems on the saxophone is not a great way to spend your time. In fact, there are several mindful ways that you can practice to get acquainted with the music before even approaching the instrument, such as score study and active listening. And in the wise words of Dr. Robert Young, balance the quality and quantity of your practice time. My second piece of advice, performing musicians are the athletes of fine motor skills. While what we do is not necessarily as glorious as what we see in the Olympics, we have to take care of our bodies daily to make sure that our bodies can take care of us when we're on stage. On this matter, a little can go a long way, from monitoring the food that we eat, to challenging ourselves physically to monitor our fitness levels in strength, flexibility, mobility, and our cardiovascular system. My final thought, be protective of your time and actively monitor your work-to-life balance. There's much more to an artistically satisfying life than practicing all day, but there certainly are not any shortcuts to developing and mastering your craft. At the end of the day, you need to do what's best for you, but you're not going to be helpful to anybody if you're constantly in pain or if you're not enjoying what you're doing. Thanks so much for listening. I hope my stories and this foundation of resources might serve as a launching point for future discussions on musicians' wellness. If you are dealing with performance anxiety or physical discomfort as you're playing, know that you're not alone in dealing with these issues. In fact, tune in next week where I'll be joined by Dr. Shauna Pennock, who will be discussing and demonstrating her live warm-up. See you next week!